Hello everybody and welcome back to a monthly reading wrap up. Today we're going to talk about the three books that I read in February. Y'all this was easily one of the worst reading months for me. As I'm talking about it I'll go ahead and pop some of my stats up here for you guys. Honestly, I am so sad that I only read three books. I feel like I read one book per week and to be fair, I'm about halfway like 60% done with a fourth book, but that'll be in my March wrap up. I just had a kind of crappy month. I'm not gonna lie personally things were just crazy soccer started back up so I've been watching that at night and not reading and it sucked. I only was able to read three books and I feel like after I finished Into the Drowning Deep last month, which by the way, January was such a great reading month for me, um, I kind of got put into a little bit of slump and I'm sad about it. And hopefully March is a better reading month, but whatever, we'll move on. Let's talk about the three books that I read this month. Uh, first, starting strong, I do have The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Moss. So this was the prequel slash the third book that I read in the Throne of Glass series. I gave this a 4.5. This was so, so good. So you can read the Throne of Glass series in so many different ways. And I know I've reiterated this a bunch. The way I am reading them is in publishing date order. So I started with Throne of Glass, then I read Crown of Midnight, then I read Assassin's Blade this month, and the next I'll read Air of Fire. And I I love this. So this is a prequel to Throne of Glass series, essentially. So you're following five different kind of short stories of Selena as she's in the Assassin's Guild. And each story is really fun. They're all chronological, so you're following her in different like stories, but as she's doing different things, as she's on different missions. And I really had a good time with that. I thought that was really fun and kind of... It was nice to kind of take myself out of the Throne of Glass kind of situation for right now and to come to this. And I really liked that. I think the way that I read this, because something major, major happens in this book, and it's kind of briefly mentioned in Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. So I had a, I had a feeling I knew what was going to happen. But as you're reading this book, you're just kind of so happy and then so, so sad because you know what's going to happen. And I feel like it's a lot more heartbreaking because you already know what's going to happen and so when you know the major thing does you expect it and therefore i like the order that i read this in do i wish that i read this this first no i think i'm happy with the order that i'm reading these books in and i love this one so much and i love the way sarah j moss writes because i feel like her pacing is so good i, I feel like in some fantasies and i know i say this a lot as well in some fantasies the pacing is slow and you're bored and you don't even know really like you're like okay what's happening i don't care we've been in this tavern for years but with sarah j moss's writing you're in the tavern for like half a page and then you move on and it's so nice and refreshing because then i feel like i'm going through the book so much faster and i'm enjoying it so much more but i'm loving the throne of glass series i cannot wait to start air of fire i don't know when though just because like i said i'm in this reading slump right now and i just want to start reading like a bunch of horror books and thriller books to really get me out of it because i just i'm in such a slump but i did love this so much like i said i gave it a four and a half stars and i've been loving the throne of glass series it's so much more intense than akatar was and i like it so much not it's so much more i still think akatar is my number one but i'm still loving the throne of glass series so love the assassin's blade next i decided to pick up this book solely because of look at these pages <gasps> they're so beautiful this is the do-over by lynn painter lynn painter wrote better than the movies which i gave a five star last year it was one of my favorite romances of last year and this is another a cutesy YA romance and luckily I picked it up at the right time because it follows a trope revolving around a time loop on Valentine's Day and I read it the week of Valentine's Day which was so perfect. I gave this one a four stars. Better Than the Movies is still my top Lynn Painter but this one was also so so stinking cute. So you're following this like really preppy sweet smart girl named Emily and she is stuck on a time loop on Valentine's Day where one bad thing after another happens and she's in a car accident. Her boyfriend is essentially cheating on her. Her dad wants to move away to Texas and she has to decide if she wants to go with him or stay home with her mom who she's having struggles with and it's just she's having a really terrible day and she has to relive it multiple times and then there's this sweet sweet guy nick who she like kind of grows fond of throughout this kind of time loop and it was really cute it was a sweet read perfect for valentine's day seriously like 
it's a time loop on Valentine's Day. It's absolutely perfect for it. But the characters were so wonderful and like endearing. And you get like a really sweet little backstory on both of them, which I kind of like because sometimes you only get like a one side of a character in a YA book. But I like having multiple views of them. And I really liked this. I thought it was super, super sweet. So I gave this one four stars. But better than the movie is read that one first and then come to this one. But I love Lynn Painter's YAs. I think they're amazing. I have one of her adult romances I'm excited to give a try, but I've heard so many good things about her YA books. I gotta keep reading them. They're just so stinking cute. <laughs> All right, guys, and then last but not least, I read my book of the month for February, which I chose The Resort by Sarah Ox or Oates. I don't know how to say it. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Book of the Month, babe, get on it. I'm telling you, I love book of the month. It's one of my favorite times of the month is picking my book when my box comes. It's so exciting. So this was the thriller pick for February. Uh, sadly, I gave this one two and a half stars. I just couldn't get into it. And I don't know if it was because of my like reading slump, my personal stuff, or if it was the book and I just couldn't get into it. But it just, I don't know. It just wasn't an exciting thriller to me. So you're following two different point of views. You're following Cass and you're following Brooke. And they both live on this island in Thailand that's essentially a tourist destination. And all of the permanents, as they're called, the people that kind of work on the island, the people that live there, permanently um all kind of band together and form this sort of friendship but they also don't talk about their past at all like they, none of them knows why they're there what they ran away from or anything like that and so like i said you're following two different vo viewpoints of brooke and cass and cass is getting married to another one of the permanents she's engaged to him but she has a really weird tragic backstory and brooke is like an influencer who came to this island in search of something but she's like kind of newer to the permanence and no one really trusts her and then all of a sudden people just kind of start dying on this island basically being murdered and everybody's kind of pointing fingers and it becomes a little bit of a thriller in that sense of the imagination um all of the reveals were just kind of mad to me i wasn't like shocked by any of them you can sort of pick up on vibes throughout the book which is something i hate i hate picking up on vibes i like being surprised um, but yeah, all of the reveals were just kind of meh. Um, it was still a, like a quality thriller. I feel like a lot of people are still going to really like this. I also feel like not only because of the cover, but I feel like this would be a great summer thriller. I don't know. It just wasn't for me. And I gave it two and a half because of that. And that kind of sucked. All right, friends. Those are the three books that I read in February. Uh, first and foremost, the do-over is just so cute on the shelf, by the way. But... I hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. I'm hoping and crossing my fingers and toes that March is a much better reading month for me because I just, I hate being in a slump. I love going through books as fast as possible. January just got me so hyped for the year and then I just kind of straight down. But hopefully you guys still enjoyed. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.